Hey guys, this is Justin Co here again with the uh, Fusion 180. And I want to go over a few things that um, I find that will probably help you. A little bit of tips and tricks. Um, the first thing is the rudder. Um, in the box, they tell you to run it at 75% gain, um, which works. Um, you can also turn it up to 100 and it works. And you can play with the PID gains and things like that on the, on the radio itself. Um, but really, you know, I turned up the gain, I turned up the I, I turned up the D, I started playing with it and I was kind of like, man, you know, I want to do something else. So what I did was actually lengthen the servo um, horn and um, you can see here that we used to have a servo horn that had this rod on the second hole and it's cut off at the factory, um, which I kind of wished it was left alone and, you know, so we could play with it. But anyway... I happen to have another servo horn from a from a Spectrum servo, and um, if you if you do have one, you can put an arm on here that's one hole longer, and with the longer hole, you're going to get a faster response on this servo, enabling you to turn the gain down. Actually, um, I'm going to go into my radio here, and you'll see that my gain now is about 60%. Um, it was up really high. It was at a hundred. Um, normal mode, I'm at 85% now. In stunt one, I'm at 60, and in stunt two, I'm at 50. So it does make a pretty big difference just going out that uh, you know two or three millimeters on that hole there, and it's going to give you more gain. So if you do have any type of tail wag, try this trick uh, because it's going to basically make that that slower tail you become a faster tail and it's either going to wag fast where your gain's too high you'll have to turn it down um, and the other thing you can do also is uh, check this out when we turn the helicopter on I'm gonna I'm gonna unplug it here I need you guys to check this when you turn on your helicopter I cross my blades like this because when you turn this on and the and the helicopter initializes you want to make sure that you have a little bit of right pitch in your in your helicopter. Um, if I go over the top of this helicopter right now, you can see that this blade on the bottom is in towards the boom. And we're looking for like two degrees. Um, there's a little space in between the two blades. You do not want the blades to be equal like this or the opposite way like that. That is not correct make sure that you have got a little bit of right pitch in this tail and this is how you do it make sure the blades are crossed like that and that one is to the boom um, that's about the amount you're going to need what this does is give it some right pitch for compensation uh, because the blade is always turning it's going to want to turn left so when you add that that mechanical adjustment you're basically making it easier on the gyro the helicopter is going to want to stay straight on its own. The gyro doesn't have to work so hard. It doesn't have to think so much. So do that, and I promise you, you will have a Kosho tail. Now, just because I'm in my house right now, we're going to go outside. It's a little windy, but I just want to show you the difference. It's even raining a little bit. The difference in response of the tail. So here we go again. We're going to take off. I'm at like 55%. 0, 55, 55 on normal mode. And my tail is locked in. I'm going to walk up to it. I am not wagging a bit. Oh man, we're going to make the camera straight. Whoa. So, I'm not locked. I'm not. I'm, I'm locked in. Here's here stunt one. That tail is not moving. The thing is, you know, I mean... It's pretty freaking good. You want that tail to, to, to try to hold though. Mine, you know, mine has a wag when it when it when it's holding. And that's what you want, you know. This is stunt one, this is about 73% throttle. And that's the other thing is you don't have to be at the throttle curves that the book recommends. This is a really powerful battery. Um, to me, the 85% is too much. Um, I'm going to stunt two here. So my stunt two right now is at 78%. And 
I'm actually below 80%. I think they recommend 85 in the book, which is fine. But this is all depending on batteries. My tail again, it's windy as shit out here and my tail is not moving. And um, you know, little helicopter in like 10, to 10 mile an hour wind right here and my tail is not moving. So anybody having trouble with tail, you know, you're gonna have to look in the book and realize that you need a little bit of right pitch on that tail. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and land this so we can discuss a little more. Let's go back in the house. I'm gonna show you how I do this. Hey, buddy. So, let's go ahead and bring this over. So, first of all, with the tail, I'm not binding. I've got full, I've got basically full throw now on my tail. Um, and that's what you want. When out of the box, it's, it's kind of, you know, it, it almost goes, but it doesn't go all the way and it's about that much, you know. So we want full control. This is not binding. I didn't do anything else in the radio. Um, so how I did that was, I'm gonna disconnect this so this doesn't make all this noise here. Um, I, I take a butter knife, basically. You can go over to your little cabinet here, boom. Have a butter knife. I go like this, I just, I just, Pop it off, boom, pop that off. You can tighten that bad boy up, it's gonna give you a little more right pitch. It pulls this guy into the boom, that's gonna give you more right pitch. Away from the boom is more left. We need to make sure that we have right, guys, not left. Uh, the other thing that uh, is a Kosho improvement that I did is I glue my little, <laughs> I glue my little, um, supports here for my rod so that they can't move around um, take a little zap and just go and just put a little bit of zap on there it keeps those bad boys straight use that longer arm everything's gonna be a lot faster and smoother as far as your tail is concerned um, so let's plug this back in here I'm gonna go through also how to do the PID tune a lot of people are asking questions on that they kind of wonder you know how do I how do I adjust my tail you know what what, what do I do to, to get that? Um, here's my IX-12, I'm gonna set this timer Time again. Um, basically what you do is you hold the sticks over to the right, you push on the bind button, you'll see the helicopter twitch. Now on your IX-12, you're gonna scroll over here and you can see that I've got my numbers lit up. The, these first numbers on page one, this is your one, that's your page one right here. I don't know what the 44 is, don't, don't worry about it. That's, that's page one. Um, I've turned my head down to 98. You can go move the stick up, it goes to 100, move it down, you go to 98. If you've got any kind of head wobbles, deal with the first number here. Deal with the second number is the I gain. You're gonna be P gain, I gain, and then D gain, and then roll rate. The roll rate is fine, leave it at 100. Uh, I turned mine down to 98 because I was getting a little bit of shaky in the wind. It's been windy out here lately and I run a high head speed. So you can adjust that. Um, if we move through the pages here, your this 4402 is the second page and you're on number five. It shows you in the manual basically what this number five means. That's gonna be the P gain on your tail. Um, I left my P at 100 again because I left the I left I lengthened that that rudder arm, so I've left the P at 100. But moving on, I've actually increased the I gain to 110, and that's the hold. That's an outside source trying to make your tail move. It's been windy around here, and when I punch it hard and I fly like Kosho, I'm basically making that tail want to move. So 110 seems to be pretty good for me. It doesn't seem to wag or anything crazy when I did that. Um, so that's where I personally like to run it for now anyway. Um, the 105 is your D gain. That's the amount that it's basically, if it bounces back and forth at the ends, you're gonna want to increase this D gain. 105 seems pretty good for me. Um, the gyro is really, really close. I just like that longer arm. So anyway, to get out of this, we're basically we're on that tail right now um, you can be anywhere in this program you you just tap the the bind sw button again switch I and the thing will switch out you can go back here and you've got basically control again of the helicopter um, we, let's just go ahead and look at my rates so that you know that there's no tricks here um, 
basically, I only use one rate on my helicopter. I'm at 100% rate. I'm at 15% expo. That's on all of your um, of your cyclic, basically, is 115%. 15% um, expo. When I go to rudder, I've actually turned up my rudder rate to 115%. And I did that because I like my rudder to be fast. When I'm doing pyro flips and things, I don't like to wait for the rudder. So I'm able to vary it with my thumb. And I thought 115 feels pretty darn good. And I don't use any expo on my tail because I want that thing to perform when I want it to. So that's that's your, your tail, your rates basically. If we go into throttle curve, um, we're, Hold is zero, of course. Get out of hold. Oh, we're plugged in. <laughs> Let's unplug the copter so I don't do anything. Um, normal. You go into normal mode here. I'm at 55%. Zero at the bottom so I can take off. 55% across the board. Stunt one. You stun, stunt one. I'm at 75%. That's what I've been flying in in the front yard, basically. That's what you just saw me fly in. As I go to stunt two, I'm at 80%. To me, 85 was like freaking extravaganza. It's like too much, so um, I went to 80, but I do have brand new juicy batteries, and I do understand that some batteries are different, and they might not have had these when they were inventing the helicopter. So um, anyway, it, th th this is the rates that I use. Um, if we go back, see if I have any more important information for you. Um, the pitch curve, basically in normal mode, um, I'm a guy that, that flies with, you know, in normal mode, I like to be able to take off. So I have 32 at the bottom, 42, 52, 75, 100. You can see my line here. That's and then of course I'm on a, um, whoa, I'm actually on a freaking punchy graph. This is a graph that I used to use. I use a template from my old, um, 180 CFX and, um, you don't have to do this, but this is basically going to make your, your helicopter a little more jumpy if you decrease number two to 23% and you increase number four to 77%. That gives you an S curve basically. It makes it faster in the stick in between here. So your servos don't necessarily have to be so fast. It's going to catch up because of the, the, of the curve I have here. But not everybody needs that. I didn't even know I had it on, but the helicopter flies good, so I'm not going to change it. So there's my pitch curve. Um, anyway, everything else here is standard. Um, you know, there's no difference in my travel or anything on, um, on these here. This is actually supposed to be, <laughs> well, it's working again. I, this should be a hundred. Let's see. Take this One minute. Down to a hundred. I don't even know how that happened. Oops. Come on, radio. Oops. They should be at 100. And it's okay. Um, it'll say 110 in the manual. Basically, wherever your speed control initializes, it doesn't have to be like the manual says. So basically, I've got 110 on the high because I like a lot of throttle. And I may not even need that. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's just go to 100, guys. 20 seconds. Let me make sure it's at 100. I'm gonna go ahead and initialize this for you right now because we need to make sure that the speed control initializes. Okay. Hold. Oh. So, speed control initialized. So, in my radio, I'm at 100 and 100. And, um, you know, that's all you need to get the speed control initialized. So there you go. There's a new, new fact for you. Um, again, you know, I, I've been doing this stuff for 30 years, so you can't fool me with a radio. If you know what cyclic does and you know what pitch does and you know what rudders do, basically all these words and everything in this radio is going to be all the same as it was for 30 years. So, um, you're doing the same thing. I could do it 50 different ways. Um, people don't complain like it's a helicopter you're gonna have to set it up <laughs> so so you know it wasn't easy for Shikorsky <laughs> that's the main thing and this isn't a planker it's not an airplane that just flies itself so you're gonna have to fly it it took me a long time to get this far um, anyway 
just take your time. It's a great helicopter. It's got that. plenty of parts to it um, that you can rebuild it with. We're going to have support. Um, you know, I really like it. There's no tricks here. It's all stock. This is what I've been flying. It just takes a little bit of skill to do it. And that's all you're going to need is some time. It's like riding a bicycle. Once you learn to ride the bicycle, then you can start doing jumps. Once you learn to spin a basketball on your finger, then you can start doing dunks. It's all the same. Just practice, 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 practice makes perfect. Uh, this is Justin Coe, and I'm out. Have a great evening, and I love you all. Thank you.